Are you sort of saying, though, that people online... So, uh, uh, Kelly here often puts lovely pictures online, but is very open and says, I use filters. Mm. Are you saying that no one should ever use filters or should we as parents just say to our kids, look, these are filters? That's what I'm saying. So, yeah. absolutely, just so, you know, you point out your... Yeah, you take a photo. I mean, there's a brilliant website, I can't remember where it is, that have sort of modelling photos Doctor, you know, the final one mm. versus the originals. Mm. It's quite it's quite daring. I think the models themselves have put them forward. Yeah. Just to make the point, this is how tweaked and, and mm. sort of, mm. you know, I was. That's really important do that you, children learn that. But you, you can think also so project, like, the best version of yourself. It's not all doom and gloom. I mean, social media, I, I use it in a way to, like, kind of create a virtual world where I share all my lovely things. I don't always want to share all the depressing things, like me washing up and <laughs> when, I, when I've got a flat tyre. If I was to start posting stuff like that, I'm sure... Sure people I would think stop, even that would start... be popular, I suspect. No, but... people would just stop and like, they just probably wouldn't follow me and that Oh, I doubt it. I doubt it. Do you think do you think that celebrities, shall we say, should have to say if they've done a photo session or whatever and they put it online or wherever, no. it should have to say Photoshop. I don't want to become like the Mary Whitehouse of the online world. That would be um <laughs> just a Mary would do, but I think the, I think the, <laughs> The important thing really is um, you just need to guide them into, look, this is what's realistic, this is what isn't. I don't think we should have to police things or behave in a certain way or celebrities have to put hashtag heavily doctored photo. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's just advising kids that what you see isn't necessarily the reality. I and mean, it's what's yeah. going on behind that. Right? One, of the things that I, one of the things that I found really interesting as well is we, we have this idea about grooming, that mm. you always think it's going to be an, an older person grooming a younger person and perhaps luring them into a world that they don't want to... They have no place being in. But it hadn't occurred to me that youngsters can groom each other, uh, just in terms of, you know, appearing very interested, supporting it, and then starting to badmouth their friends, then draw them away from their parents just to be manipulative and get them to do something that they like. I think a very important lesson, for instance, is to say that people's behaviour online is very, very unlike people's behaviour in real life. So yeah. what I would say to your face is almost certainly not what I dare tweet you necessarily, is it? Yeah. You know? And that's, that's an important lesson, and people do behave differently because there's an anonymity there that yeah. gives you a feeling of sort of bravado, but actually I think is sort of cowardice, really, the isn't it? The greatest weapon against all of this, isn't it, is conversation with your kids, and building up their self-esteem so that they can deal with whatever's flung their way. It is as easy as that, but... Yeah. I think... <laughs> You know, the, problem, the problem is when most parents were growing up, none of this stuff existed. Nasty so that's, magazine. You know, that's why I wrote the book. Really, exactly. 